Hey fellas, welcome back to part two of the TA-152 build. I just got it in primer. Take a look at it there. And uh, overall, I'm happy to get it to this point. Getting the wings on, <clears throat> as you'll see in this video, was quite a task. It just doesn't, uh, it didn't fit very well. But uh, I show you how I get the wings on and I cover filling some gaps with styrene and this may be old hat for some of you guys that have been building for a while but uh, I get a lot of new people on my channel that are well new to the hobby or, or just picking it back up again that may not know how to do some of these things so in a lot of my videos I try to include uh, things that work for me that may help some of the newer guys out so uh, let's get on with the video all right, now let's get back to this beast. Okay, so I went ahead and installed the wing fillets, this piece and this piece on either side. <clears throat> and I had a little bit of a squishy experience. I squished some some of my uh, melted plastic out right there. And it is what it is. I tried to sand some of it down. Um, I may work on it here in a little bit. But uh, what I wanna tackle now is the fit of the wings. Now I've went ahead and I've started shaving off some of this down here to help with the fit and that seems to have worked a little bit. And I also added some plastic card along this portion right here. So I have a nice tighter fit because there was a little bit of a gap when I test fitted it earlier. So I've got that taken care of. So this should lock in and it I've got a really good fit along the bottom. And once I line that up, my gap here with my plastic card is gone. And right up here, I've got a nice seam where I can just glue that in and I should be good to go on the bottom. Now, my issue comes up here, right along these two points right here. There's a noticeable gap. Now, I don't know if something else was off and it, it doesn't expand out right. I don't know. I know it fits everywhere else but there, so, you know, who knows. But either way, I've got to take care of this gap. Now, I could do this one of a couple ways. Now, I can go ahead and glue this down and then come along with a filler and fill that in uh, and then sand it, or I could come in with some uh, Magic Sculpt and fill it in, uh, but... Uh, I don't know that that's going to look the best. So what I want to do, because I have all these details around here that are going to be super hard to replicate if I have to do any sanding. So I definitely don't want to do a filler that, that has me sand once this is joined. <clears throat> so what my plan is, is to take care of these before I glue it down. So I'm going to extend out this piece right here and this piece with a little bit of plastic card, just like I did on the bottom, right along there. And if you guys haven't done this, it's, uh, it's pretty simple to do. It sounds somewhat complicated, but it's not. So I've got some .04 plastic card, just a normal type of styrene. And I'm gonna cut out a little piece, a couple little pieces. And what's nice about this is you don't have to cut an exact size. You can cut it down after you glue it. Make sure that this is going to be big enough. Okay, that's going to be big enough. So we'll cut out another piece just like it for the other side. So basically what you do is you glue these oversized pieces down and then you can cut them to shape and uh, since I probably will have to sand a little bit the only detail that I may mess up on this is maybe some of this area right here I may have to rescribe this but I can be careful enough that 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 shouldn't pose an issue so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of my real sticky stuff the Tamiya extra thin normal normal potent power and I'm just gonna spread it along here I'm gonna take my piece and just put it on there and 
Now I want this to be a really good bond. So I'm gonna glue it on both sides. And I'm really gonna press it down and I'm not real concerned about it oozing out because I want it to be really, really nice and secure. Because sometimes this has a, it doesn't glue up as strongly as if I were gluing, um, because this styrene, I assume, has some kind of a slightly different uh, compound than what the, uh, the kit plastic does. So I've always had a little bit of a uh, more difficult time getting these to adhere quite as good as if I had the kit plastic to work with, gluing it onto kit plastic. But this should suffice. because I am gonna be really cutting this and sanding it. I want as good a bond as I can get. And it's really important once you do this that you let it fully cure because if you start cutting and snipping and shaving away material while it's still not fully cured, it's still a little bit soft, it's just gonna rip off and just make a mess. So you gotta really let this cure. So I will probably actually let this cure for a day and come back at it tomorrow. And then I can start trimming and cutting and shaving until I get it to fit right in there. So there's there's the uh, perfect amount of seam that I, that I, that I should have. That way, <clears throat> all my sanding and filing and, and all the, all the uh, material that I have to take away and, and is gonna be right along here, and I'm not going to risk losing as much detail as if I were to actually put it on and then try to fill it and sand it. So uh, that's where I'm at, and uh, we will uh, be back here shortly. Well, for me, it'll be a day, but for you guys, it'll be uh, the next segment. Okay, well, it's been about a day, and I'm gonna go through and just give you an idea of how I do this. So I've just got my, my uh, cutters here and I'm just gonna go along and carefully trim this. Now, I just basically take out little chunks at a time and my cutters aren't working very good. I may need to adjust these. Um, you can also come in with a pair of scissors and trim them, which <laughs> this is kind of in an awkward spot. Yeah, that's gonna pull too hard. So, I just happened to put this in an awkward, awkward place. And I'm just taking out chunks at a time and I'm careful not to go too far towards here. I don't really want to cut too deep. I don't want to put this right up next to it. Uh, I just want to trim some of this excess away. And then I can come in with an, a sharp X-Acto blade. And then I can come in and just slice this away. And this styrene cuts really easily. It's pretty soft. I gotta make sure I don't cut my thumb off. And I'm just gonna trim it with this to the contour of the part that I'm extending. Like so. And then after I trim this with the knife, I'm gonna come in with a sanding stick like this and smooth this out and get it all even. So basically I've just created an extension of this piece. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and work on this and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I fit it on there. Okay, now before I carry on, I know this is gonna be old hat for some of you guys, but I've got a lot of viewers that <clears throat> 
are new to the hobby and, and haven't done a lot of this kind of stuff. So this is kind of for them. So let's take a look at what it looks like. Now I've got it all sanded down. And as you can see, I haven't destroyed any of the panel lines or any of the uh, uh, rivet detail. And that and and that's kind of why I, I did it this this way instead of doing fillers and all that other stuff. So I've got it nice and smoothed. You shouldn't be able to tell where the plastic the white starts and uh, where the white meets up with the the gray kit plastic once I get it painted. So now I've now that I've got this extra material on there. I'm going to start test fitting, and this is what's going to take the longest amount of time. And this is a little bit more difficult than, than how I normally do this because I've got two different sides to try to file down equally to fit into this area. And there is just a little bit needs to be taken off on this side, and then a little more so on this side for whatever reason. So... How I'm going to do that is I've got a file, and I like using files for this kind of stuff. And I'm just going to go along, and I'm going to try to just file away a little bit at a time, just like so. And I'm going to try to file away on both sides. I know I've got to take a little more off on this side than I do here. So I will take a little bit more off, spend a little bit more time on this side. Okay, and I know this isn't going to fit, but I need to be test fitting. I need to file a little bit, test fit, file a little bit, and test fit until I get it just right. So this is going to take me a while. I'm going to get on with this, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, now I've got this filed down, and it fits pretty good. Now... This side over here pops up just a little bit, so I'm off somewhere. This side looks really good, but if you can see right there, it does pop up. So I'm when I glue this, I am going to start, probably put some glue in there and just hold it down so I can make sure that this side gets seated down correctly. And then this little bitty gap up here, I will just fill in with some testers putty and wipe it away so I won't have to do any sanding. And so that's what it's going to look like. Now that is much better than the big gaps that we had. A little bit of extra work, but it saved me a lot of time and that I didn't have to uh, sand away a lot of detail and have to try to replicate it. So that's where we're at. All right, I've got the wings. I've got everything on here that I'm going to put on before I paint. Now the wings, it wasn't perfect. It was still kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, my plastic card did work out a lot better than trying to fill that in with, with putty or, or something else. Now, some of these didn't fit in real well, and there were some gaps, so I, in order to try to hide those gaps, I used Tester's putty and wiped it away with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I think once it gets primer on it, it will look a lot better. Those will kind of vanish. The, uh, the bottom, it's okay. Again, not, not perfect. Got the flaps and ailerons on, as well as these little things, which I, I really didn't want to have to put on, but trying to paint, they're so fragile, trying to paint them, I knew I, was, I would lose them or they would, uh, they would break. So I went ahead and glued those on. Uh, there are a couple other little places that I probably need to touch up with the putty, and, uh, and then I can throw some primer on it. And uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, I use Mr. Surfacer 1500 gray or black. I'm going to use gray on this one because I'm going to do a multicolor camouflage scheme. And if I try to black base it, it's just not going to work. Uh, it's, it's just not going it, to, you're not going to notice it. So I'll do all my shading and stuff uh, post. I'll do a bunch of post shading instead of pre-shading with black base. And... Uh, I like using the gray primer because it does allow me, I can just see the flaws a lot easier in the gray than I can the black. Uh, I guess it's a personal preference, but for me, for my eyes, <clears throat> the gray works a lot better for seeing all my mistakes. So uh, once I get the uh, few other little seam issues taken care of, then I will wipe it all down with isopropyl alcohol 
and get my grubby fingers and oils and stuff off of it so I get uh, the, the paint adheres nicely, then um, we'll start to paint. Okay, now that I'm getting ready for paint, I've got all these small parts and I'd really like to, if at all possible, put, put all the parts on the plane before I paint it. And that way I can attach it with extra thin and it doesn't mess up the paint. But in this case, I've got all these little bitty small parts that are going to get knocked off and broken if I put them on the plane. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just cut the sprue off and I'll typically, if there's a lot of parts, I'll leave the number on there so I know which one it is. But with this kit, they've got the attachment points like right in the middle of the part. Now, this is going to cause me an issue because after I paint it, I'm going to have to cut it off and then trim off the, the, uh, the attachment point and then I'm going to have to touch it up. Well, with this part, I think I'm just going to leave it on such a small little part. I think I can, after I paint it, I can just touch it up with a brush. So I'm going to leave this one the way it is. But these other parts, uh, what I'm doing is I'm attaching them to a toothpick. Now, <clears throat> a lot of times what I like to do, especially like this pedo tube, if this part's going to be attached into the plane, there's going to be a little bit that's not going to need to be painted, and it's probably best if it's not painted. So I'll just take a little clip like this and I'll just put it in there and that will suffice. Uh, but for parts like this, where there's just a little bitty little dot that sticks into the plane, uh, it gets rather difficult. Now, preferably the sprue gate or the sprue attachment point would be down here, but it's not on this one, it was up here. So I, I went ahead and cleaned this part, cut this off, cleaned it up, and I'm attaching it to the end of a toothpick. Now, this is pretty delicate because if you hit it, it's going to pop off, fly off, and get lost in the carpet. But if you're careful, this works great. So I've got these toothpicks that I get from Walmart. And they're a couple bucks for 250 and they're extra long toothpicks. I love them. I use them all the time. I was going to include these in my uh, favorite things video, but uh, I forgot. So how I do this is I'll just take a little bit of super glue, just a little bit. It doesn't take much. And I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue on the end. And that is very little. And then I'm going to take some kicker and stick it on the part that I want to attach. And then I'm just going to take this part. Stick it on here. Okay. Now I can paint it. I just have to be careful because this is really fragile. And the reason I don't want to use a lot of super glue, I want to use the least amount possible, is because, <clears throat> you know, I don't want to have to be scraping off super glue after I paint it. So uh, this should hold for spraying. Now, if I, if I go and touch this, like if I want to remove it, I just have to like flick it or it'll probably just crack off because there's so little super glue on there but it should hold up while I while I paint it, as long as I'm not spraying it like a thousand PSI. So that's how I uh, hold my little bitty parts. Well, <laughs> didn't have enough super glue on that one. Uh, boy, do I got egg on my face. So let's go ahead and do this. <clears throat> I put just a little bit on here. Okay, well, that's too much. All right, so let's do it again. And the thing is with super glue, uh, you can like try to pull it and it won't break off, but if you give it a shock, like flick it, it'll pop right off. So. Okay, so that should be good. All right, I will uh, flash up some pictures of the primed plane and I will see you on the next episode.